What's up everybody? Today I'm gonna to be going over five mixed reality user experience design tips that I learned while going through the Microsoft Designing Holograms app for the HoloLens. This app recently came out and its main goal is to teach users these fundamentals of mixed reality UX design while allowing them to actually interact with holograms and learn the fundamentals in practice. So I found everything in the app really valuable, especially for someone like me who's just learning these fundamentals. And I wanna make a video originally showing the entire app all the way through just in case if you didn't have a HoloLens, you could see what it's like to go through it and see all the different stages and things like that. But that would have taken half an hour, 45 minutes, and that would have been a pretty boring video. So instead, I'm just gonna take the five most important things I learned from going through the app and share them with you. All right, let's get into the app. We're gonna start with spatial awareness because most mixed reality applications will use spatial awareness to keep track of the different objects and walls in the user's environment but it's important to let the user know that this is happening so they can better anticipate how your app is going to react in their environment. Microsoft also recommends that you make scanning part of the UX process in your app so that the user gets a better idea of what part of their environment is being scanned and how it'll look before actually starting the app. So here's an example of what that might look like. This is in my living room and you can see the scan is pulsing every five seconds or so but it's not staying there when it scans. It kind of disappears as the wave goes over the walls and doors and all that. So it's not obstructing my experience at all, but it's letting me know that the app is scanning and recognizing my environment. Key takeaway number two is hologram expectations. Microsoft's research has shown that users expect holograms to behave like real objects. And I can definitely attest to this one. There's been a few times I've moved around or ducked under a hologram because I felt like it was really part of my environment. Here's me interacting with a hologram coffee cup, and you can see my instinct is to grab the handle just like I would with a real coffee cup in real life. Same thing here for these buttons. My instinct would be when I tap the button, it would be clicked, and it is, that's communicated with the visual there, that the purple circle that moves out, as well as the gray box around the button that contracts and expands. You can also use a bounding box to show a user how big a hologram actually is. This is especially useful when holograms are colliding with another object in the environment. You can see here as my hand gets closer, the bounding box shows up and gives me an idea of how much space the hologram actually takes up. These bounding boxes can also be used to resize a hologram if you want. The user can grab a corner and then push down or pull up to actually resize the hologram, either as small or as big as they want. All right, number three is hand tracking. If you're using hand tracking in your app, you want to let the user know that you are, but you don't want to show this animation the entire time because it takes a pretty noticeable performance impact on your device. You can show the full hand mesh like I was just showing previously, or you can show this 25 point hand tracker. Both are great ways to let the user know that their hands are being tracked and they can use them to interact with holograms in the app. Also keep in mind that there's a limited hand tracking window that the device generates in front of you. So you can't move your hands to the side of your head or down by your waist and expect that the device will still know where your hands are or be able to use them in the app. You gotta kinda keep them in front of you, not all the way in front of your face, but at least in front of you so the cameras can see your hands and be able to track them. This visual conveys that really well. You can see the user grabs the box hologram and then moves it accidentally outside of the hand tracking frame and the device just kinda loses track of it. Number four is interacting with faraway holograms. Not every hologram in your app is gonna be directly in front of the user, and it's possible that users can push holograms away or throw them off to the side. So it'll be really useful for them if you implement some type of summon action, which is what I'll show here. So you see these three objects are really far out of my reach. There's no way I can directly grab them, but I can grab this one and pull it closer, summon it towards me, or push it and move it further away. So that's really useful if maybe this was a, a UI element that got pushed too far away, I could just grab it, move it around, pull it towards me, or push it away if I was no longer interested in using it. So in this example, I'm using the summon technique to pull and push around smaller holograms, but I've actually found this to be the most helpful when I have multiple browser windows open like this. You know, I can have one open, pull it closer to me, interact with it more precisely, and then once I'm done with it, push it off to the side, push it away, and then pull the other one that I'm more interested in closer to me and interact with that. 
So I think this is a really useful tool for when you want to multitask or just have multiple windows open. It makes your app a lot more user friendly. Last but not least, we have head and eye tracking. This is really useful for a user when their hands or voice aren't available for use. You can see I'm just moving my head around and the cursor is telling me where my head is pointed. And with this, I can actually select holograms and interact with them. In this example, I'm resting the cursor on the hologram and it's selecting it, which is shown with the white outline there. And then I'll deselect that one and the same with these other two. It's important to keep in mind that this cursor is only used when you're using head tracking, not eye tracking. You should also keep the cursor small enough so it doesn't obstruct the view of the hologram for the user. And you can also use eye tracking, which is a really cool feature. Again, there's no cursor because we're not using head tracking, but you can tell which hologram I'm looking at based on the timer under each one that's running and the color change of the hologram. And they're actually changing colors because there's a heat map that's being generated and I think that feature itself will be really useful when you're testing out new apps with users because you'll be able to tell where their eyes gravitate most and create a really good user experience. Just to wrap up head targeting and eye targeting, there are some pros and cons for each one. Head targeting can be slow and fatiguing and require a cursor, but it does have more controlled movement. Eye targeting, on the other hand, can be fast and low effort without a cursor required, but there's no smooth eye movements. So you really just have to decide based on your use case, which one is the right one for your app. All right, there you have it. Those were the five most important things that I learned while going through the Designing Holograms app. Of course, there are many more tips and tricks and lessons and sections of that app. I couldn't go through everything, but hopefully you found those five tips to be really useful and you can use them when you're designing mixed reality experiences as well. If you have any questions or want me to elaborate any more about any of the tips that I shared, just let me know down in the comments. I'd be happy to give some more information about each one. All right, that's all for this one. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.